Hi guys, Optastic here. Since I started making videos, I've had more people than usual message me in-game to say they're interested in creating their own 10 hit point pures, which is great. In my opinion, it's a really fun way to play the game, and if it's something you've ever considered, I'd definitely recommend giving it a go just to see if you enjoy the playstyle. The build feels like a mix between skillers and mains, because it takes elements from both, and as a result I see it as sort of the bridge between the two, and it does feel like its own separate game mode. If there's one thing that tends to put people off though, it would have to be all the restrictions you face, but to be honest, I find the challenge this creates to be the best part about playing this way. Finding workarounds to training certain skills and completing certain quests and achievement diaries keeps it from going stale even when you're late game. It's not easy to get bored when you're constantly thinking of ways to overcome obstacles, especially if you like setting yourself difficult goals. Today I want to give you a basic overview of the more common problems you would face and solutions to them. This won't be a comprehensive list, but hopefully it will help those of you new to the 10 hit point scene. First off, quests. You should try to get used to looking up the experience rewards straight away. It definitely pays off to be cautious, as those extra few seconds could prevent you from ruining your account. If there are quests you've done before and you know them well enough to not need a guide, it can be easy to get ahead of yourself. Hit points experience is given in various quest lines which will stop you from progressing through them. If you've chosen to level specific combat stats, this will in turn limit you even further. Because of this, where possible, planning ahead is always a good idea. Not just to be safe, but to save time too, deciding what quests you'd like to do, seeing if you can do them and then just putting them in order. Something to keep in mind is that plenty of quest bosses can still be killed, so don't let that stop you if you have something particular in mind. Allowing yourself to train range means you can use the dwarf multi-cannon, which counts as real damage, meaning you don't actually need to attack the enemy yourself to defeat them. Cannons are great because they grant 2 range experience per damage you deal, and don't give any hit points experience. For quest bosses in areas that don't allow cannons, or if you just don't want to train range, you could also use recoil rings or vengeance other with an ult. You can then flinch it if you need to, letting it hit you once and then backing to safety to eat, repeating this until its health is preferably one hit point. Recalls and vengeance count as neutral damage, so you would then need to finish it off with an actual attack. Most enemies require you to do at least one real damage to them for it to count as a kill, which is why it's usually necessary to do this if you can't use a cannon. It's worth noting that there are exceptions to this rule though, for example the two bosses you encounter during the feud can be killed solely with neutral damage. Unfortunately this isn't a very common thing though so I wouldn't rely on it. So next you've got spells and other teleports. Depending on your build you might already be limited by which areas you have access to, but it just doesn't compare to something that can be such a constant inconvenience if you don't prepare correctly. If you choose to train magic then you'll of course have access to the default spellbook, and also the Arceus spellbook, and then with some difficulty the Ancient spellbook. A big shame, but you're not able to obtain the Lunar spellbook, which obviously just so happens to be the most useful one, because of quests along the way granting hit points experience. This means you'll unfortunately miss out on useful teleports to farming locations, the super compost spell, vengeance, and spellbook swap. To get around, I personally rely on teleport tabs, jewellery, and the minigame teleports. Since the majority of these have no requirements at all, Regardless of your build, you'll always have a convenient way to at least get to all the major cities from the default spellbook, castle wars, clan wars, barbarian assault, skilling guilds, and so on. If you have an alt account with lunars and want to be more efficient when doing farm runs, you could also have that follow you around and use the group teleport spells. But yeah, you'll probably find that hoarding large amounts of each teleport will help make your experience as natural as possible, and will save you some time in the long run. And finally, the last big thing you'll be limited by is how you actually train your skills. I know this one sounds like it might be pretty obvious, but if you're planning to attempt this kind of account coming from a background of not being used to restrictions, it can be a little disorienting just to jump straight into it. At one end of the scale, at their most limited, you will at least be able to level your non-combat stats through the same method that a skiller would use. In reality though, you'll hopefully build onto this, and as a result, more often than not you should be slightly better off. Again, it all depends on which combat stats you choose to train, as each of them offers something to make skilling and gameplay in general more practical. There are quite a lot of situations, so I'll just give you one or two examples for each stat. Attack allows you to wield an axe or pickaxe when woodcutting and mining, which saves an inventory space and allows you to periodically boost your level if you're using dragon tools. Strength allows you to train fishing using the fastest method in the game, barbarian fishing. Defense unlocks the serpentine helmet at level 75, which makes it so you can inflict venom on enemies attacking you, providing a very useful source of neutral damage, which, most notably, allows 10 hit point pures to complete the fight caves for a fire cape. Might sound a little far-fetched, but it's actually a feat already achieved by two people, VAA and Teeks. If that one does sound too crazy though, defense with a high enough level would also allow you to do two-tick woodcutting and use the abyss without dying. As briefly discussed earlier, range allows you to use a cannon which can be used to train Slayer, 
VAA again and No Life Cape are currently the only two people to actually obtain 99 this way. It's very expensive and takes a lot of time, which understandably puts some people off, but it is actually the best method available. Prayer obviously allows you to use the protective overheads, which contributes towards making Slayer, quests, and the fight caves easier to do. That leaves us with magic, which, even on a main, the only two skills not training this would affect are runecrafting and slayer. Because 10 hit point pures can never get the lunar spellbook and would obviously never barrage slayer, there's actually no advantage to training this skill, unless you count the teleports when farming. So I think that's about it. We covered quests, spells and skills. Those are the three biggest things that would impact your day-to-day -day gameplay. There are obviously more differences, but to be honest, if you decided to take this type of account on, these are smaller things that you would probably discover quite quickly. Hope you enjoyed this one. I know a great deal of people won't be interested in making their own 10 hit point pures, but it's something I'm personally quite passionate about, given that my main account is one. And yeah, I hope it provided some insight. Alright, thanks for watching.